starting the first seeds of the 2023 season for our flower farm here in Oklahoma 7A. But we have a lot of work to do before I can get officially to sowing seeds. The first thing we need to do is get our flower cottage cleaned up and ready for the flooring to start going in. And then I can build my seed racks and hopefully get at least maybe like one level filled with seeds and lights and all of that. But we need to clear out from when we filmed our year in review video, which is an awesome video. I can link it below. We have mess everywhere. But it's starting to look really good. We have walls, we have the ceiling. Things are really coming together. But we also have tools and trash and all the tools and everything. So first thing is we need to clear this all out and then we can start in the flooring. said cleaned out. I got the trash, I got the chairs and camera equipment and the vacuums. I swept it out because we're going to lay flooring and we're going to start on this side of the cottage and work our way towards the door. And the reason for that is right against this wall here next to our cooling and heating is where I'm going to have the seed racks. We have room for two side by side and then if I ever needed it more towards the front of the cottage shed, I have room for a third rack if I needed it, but I don't think I need three racks this year. I think two is gonna be sufficient. I've got the metal baker racks, they're four foot wide. So I'm gonna work on assembling them once Eric has laid enough of the flooring in that corner for me to put it on top, which is really awesome. And then if we get all of that done, I will sow some seeds. So quick little tour to get your bearings straight. We filmed a video about a couple months ago of the shed being delivered. So if you want a little tour of all of our plans and stuff, I'll link that video below. But this is about half of the shed, looking this way, the flower cottage as we're calling it, not shed. And like I said, two seed racks here. We've got our cooling system. And then against this wall with the, with the metal backing, I'm going to have shelves, so I have a working, a flat working space, and I have storage underneath, and I think in time we're gonna add floating shelves here, which I'm really excited about. And then on this wall, we have our year at a glance calendar, where Eric and I went through the whole year, and we put on it like the big, the big to-dos that we need to get done. It was a really helpful brain dump. We are on the same page of stuff that Eric, only Eric can do, because I can't, do it myself like stuff with the tractor it was really helpful so that's going to live here and i'm probably going to add my seed starting calendar to it as well so i have everything in this room so i think we're going to start in that back corner with flooring okay flooring instructions including a high five at the end super important enjoy your new floor <laughs> projects will take and they always take at least 30 minutes 30 minutes 30 percent 
longer than I anticipate and the kids always kind of get involved and cause problems. So it's a new day, but I finally get to start my first seeds of 2023. I'm going to be starting Canterbury Bells, also known as Campanula, Campanula, and Stock. Those are going to be my first ones to go. And I pretty much soil block. Soil blocking is a great way to start your seeds. It's super space efficient. I can fit way more seeds on my seed rack than I could with your standard trays. But the tricky part with soil block is you can't use it for everything because if you have a big seed like a sunflower seed or a marigold, the little blocks are too small for them. So you do have to have trays. So I have trays, that's how I do my sunflowers and all of that. But for my itty bitty seeds and for mass seed starting, I'm really enjoying doing soil blocking. I filmed a video from last season of me soil blocking for the first time and I go into way more detail about soil blocking and how it works. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that in the description. But I was just gonna bring you along as I start what will actually be like 300 seeds, which is super exciting. So let's get started. Got all my supplies here, hopefully trying to get organized and back into the routine. I've got my seed trays, I've got my seeds, my toothpick, and my little bowl that I use because the seeds are so tiny. I got my mud soup mix of soil and the soil block. There are 20 cells per block and I should, I'm hoping, be able to fit four in my tray. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up all my trays and then I'll get seed starting. All right, time to make a huge, gross mess. Gotta get my technique back. It's been a while since I did this. So there might be some flailing in the beginning. I'm just using potting soil but technically there's like a special mix you can use for like perfect little blocks, but it's January, nurseries aren't as stocked. Perhaps a bit of laziness is involved. We'll see, let's see my first block. <gasps> Yay, you look so good. Feeling confident. Soil blocks can take a bit longer to make Obviously, I could fill a tray, much one tray up much quicker than doing this process. But once you get your soil blocks made and going, on average, your seedlings are ready about 30% faster than in a tray. So like if I started zinnias in a 72 count tray, those seedlings would be ready to transplant on average in about four weeks. But when I soil block my zinnias, they are ready in three weeks, which is pretty awesome. Yes, I'm killing it. I have, I can't, my pack of Canterbury Bells from Baker's Creek doesn't list how many seeds are in, but it looks like a lot. So I'm gonna do one full tray of them and then I have 50 stock and 50 eryngium. I forgot about eryngium. And so I'm hoping I can do one full tray. Oh, I'm doing such a better job this time than in that video I mentioned my first time doing this. If you use potting soil, one of the benefits of using like the special mix is it's much finer and so it does a good job of getting into these little cells whereas potting mix obviously has like some bigger pieces, some mulch pieces. So some people sift their potting soil. I don't have the ability to do that. So sometimes I just have to like pick out any, any sticks that I see got into it. Okay, last one for this tray. Yay, looks awesome. I didn't record any of that with that camera. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Here I am thinking I'm being all tricky with two cameras 
and I didn't record squat. Um, all right, try again. The second tray, soil blocking. Goal for this one again is four, four brownie bites in. And if I have any extra that I run out of seeds and all of the blocks aren't filled, that's okay. They can just be there. There we go. The mix that you would use for soil blocks is way, way wetter than tray. So I got a bit of a mud soup here I'm working with. Get the sticks out. Okay. The nice thing about the cottage shed is I have some windows. <laughs> And keep an eye on the kids playing outside while I work in here. Or at the very least, hear them. And I hear a dispute occurring amongst the little ones. If you're hearing that on the microphone. Okay, I have two trays. This time I'm actually recording so I can show you my sweet little brownie bites. So now we're up to 160 cells for seeds. And this one is going to get four more and we'll see how far that gets me with with the seeds. I guess I don't have to sow every single last one. There we go. Awesome. Okay. I don't have a sink here in the flower cottage yet. Eric ran the water, but we don't have the sink yet. So I have to go inside to clean my disgusting hands and then come back and start putting seeds. So I have four trays with four blocks each. So that's 240, 240 seeds. First up, I'm gonna do Campanula Canterbury Bells. I'll put a picture on the screen. These are so pretty. They're from Baker Creek. And the, the plant is a tall stalk with flowers all the way up it and they look like little bells. These guys take forever to get to bloom. They're very long. A lot of places will plant them in the fall under row cover. I didn't have my act together, so I'm not doing that. So I'm starting them now really early in January. Get them going, get them to be pretty sizable. And then I think the plan is to put them out in the raised garden because then I can put frost cloth over them if I need to. And there's a chance I might see blooms this year, but they should perennialize for me and just stay in the raised garden and then maybe kind of like a foxglove, I might see blooms next year. But I wanted to experiment with these. I've never grown these before. So we're gonna do that first. What I have here, I have a little sauce cut for my kitchen and all the seeds are inside. They are so tiny, I don't even think the camera would pick up on it. But the trick is you get a toothpick and you lick it and then you can individually get each little seed and get it in its little cell. Often these sorts of flowers that are super tiny will come pelletized, which means they have a handy little coating that will dissolve in water, but it makes it easier to pick them up and put them in. Sometimes you'll see carrots, definitely foxglove like that. But these guys are naked and tiny, so I need to use the toothpick trick. But I have space for 80 of them and we'll see how many seeds are left over. So let me get them in. Oh my gosh, these are so tiny. There's no way your fingers could do this correctly without sowing like three seeds in a cell, which is not the end of the world. It's not a very expensive seed. I could do that and then just thin, but I really would like to get the full 80. So if I end up doubling up too much, I won't get there. This can be a nice, quiet, relaxing activity to do or it can be highly annoying and stressful. I guess it depends on your personality. I'd say I'd maybe in between. Depending on my mood, I'd like to sit here and do this quietly. And then other times it's like I hear the children 
I can see the clock counting down at the time I have to accomplish this before anarchy ensues. And so I just want to like dump, scatter, and be done. But I will be disciplined. Disciplined and focused. So this is done. I'm going to get it labeled and put it under the lights just for now to get it off my table and move on to stock. Last step for today, I have Eryngium, also known as Sea Holly. I'll put a picture on the screen. My mom got this for me, which I'm really excited about. It does well in cool temperatures. It's a long um, perennial. And the germination test rate on the packet is pretty low, which sometimes can happen with perennial seeds. So there's 100 in here. I do not need 100 sea holly, but because of the germination rate, I'm gonna sow all of them that I can fit in these soil blocks and probably assume I'm going to get half of that. But even if I got 50 eryngia, that is so many for me in my space which is awesome. Yep, it's a perennial in zones three through eight. So it'd be awesome if I can get these started and planted and then I don't have to do them again. They will just live happily in my garden. They, oh, this is interesting. They wanna germinate at a warm temperature, but then they want to grow thereafter at a cooler temperature, so they're pretty fussy. So they're gonna need to be on a heat mat until they germinate and then they can move under the lights to a 60 degree temperature, which is about what we keep this grow room at. So this should be pretty good. Does it tell me, do not cover as light aids in germination. So it needs to be under a heat mat and under the lights, which is interesting. And that's the same as Capanula. So they can be nice little buddies on the heat mat together under the lights. So let's get these started. Stock needs light, uh, darkness to germinate. The seeds need to be covered a bit. So I tried to push them down in the in the soil block, but I'm also going to cover them with vermiculite. And not put them under the light right away. Now they look like walnut covered brownie bites. <laughs> On to my last step here. I have my three trays all labeled. I bought those little pizza tables that you get in a pizza order sometimes. I got these on Amazon. And I'm putting them, it'll be a little tricky here. I try to give enough space between my blocks. I'm putting them here in the middle because I'm going to cover these blocks with plastic wrap as kind of a humidity dome to keep the humidity and moisture on these blocks while the seeds are germinating. And once about 50% has germinated, the table will come off and the plastic wrap will come off and they'll be good to go and they'll get their standard watering. Um, but I saw this little trick on YouTube and I think it'd be very helpful because I don't really want the plastic wrap laying on top of the germinating seedlings and seeds because the seeds can get stuck to them. When I go to take off the plastic, they can get ripped out, all of that. It's not gonna be perfect, but it'll definitely help raise it up a bit. Ooh, let's see if I can Maybe I'll add another table. I definitely have enough. Can I add a table here at the end? Just not gonna make these blocks very happy. No, we're gonna wing it. We're gonna wing it. Do it live. It's just a loose wrap. It's not tight because I don't wanna restrict airflow, it just helps the moisture not leave so fast. Do it this way, it's light enough. This should be good enough, we should be okay. Come here. I 
I need more plastic wrap from Costco. A little bit more, come on. Loosely lay it. These two are the ones going on my heat mat, so they'll definitely get the humidity going. Here I have my stock. The kids have found me, if you can hear that. Come on, come on. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. The last of the roll. Womp womp. Well, that's what you're getting, stock, until I can go find more. We go let's get them in their new little seed rack home sea holly and campanula need light to germinate but like it warm so they've got a heat mat they've got light they're good to go i put a cookie rack underneath so it's not directly on my mat because my mat is a cheap mat that you can't perfectly calibrate the heat on and i don't want to actually like roast my seedlings so they're raised up just a little bit. And then lastly, stock does not need light to germinate. It needs cool temps and moisture. So it will get to sit up here where there's no light on until I have 50% germination and then they can move under. So I've officially started working in the flower cottage. I've officially started seeds for the 2023 season. I'm so excited. Nothing's germinated yet, so I haven't technically been successful, but the process has started. I can get back in the, to the routine. It feels like spring is gonna be here before I know it, and I'm very excited. I have a bunch of other perennials getting cold stratification in my fridge, but they're not quite ready to go yet. I think I need to give them like two more weeks of cold. So my next seed starting round will be a couple weeks from now. So that gives me a chance again to get my practice of watering them, taking care of them, not forgetting about them. I've got my liquid fertilizer. I need to get yellow sticky traps in here in case I have any fungus gnats that decide to show up. But it feels like it's officially the new 2023 flower season. See you in the next video. Did you hear that noise? That's the cow rancher siren. When he goes by, he gives the sound and then all the cows start running to go get their hay. So that was perfect timing. It must be like 11 o'clock. He's pretty on time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, there's a bunch of videos linked in the description of more details of everything I did that I filmed last season. But give us a subscribe and a like because I plan to bring you along this whole behind the scenes world of what it's like on a flower farm. See you in the next video. What is that? It's baby plants. It's baby plants? Yeah. Oh, are they so cute? Yeah. Oh, are you going to help me take care of them? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, don't touch them. They got to live there. They're going to take a nap. Say night-night, babies. Night-night, babies.